Hello and welcome to another episode of the Polo series from the Singapore Polo Club. I am Andira Lalwani and today on the show with me is Elisa Kruski, our guest presenter. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much, Andira. How long have you been in Singapore, Ellie, and how, how much do you know about polo? Do you enjoy playing it? Absolutely. I've been here for 13 years and I've been exposed to polo many, many years. And I took it up probably last year because I started riding around five years ago. I love it. It's the best thing I've done. That sounds so exciting and I'm going to keep finding out more about that as the show progresses. But as far as today is concerned, it's the second leg of the Triple Crown. Today is the Pro-Am tournament on the field, off the field, off the field with Ellie and me. She's the Pro, I'm the Am. But for what it means on the field, we went over to Stein Welkers to find out. We have six goal uh, uh, tournament this time. Um, we had six team enter, which is combined members with um, with a professional. Um, this is the second in a series of three tournaments in the Triple Crown series. As you say, we had the Diplomats Cup last month, and now the Pro M. And in two weeks, we do Singapore Open, and that completes the series. In the Diplomats Cup, the Spirit Sports team came first. They came in the put them in the pool on this tournament. So technically, the Triple Crown cannot be won anymore by any team, which is actually fairly normal. It's quite rare for one team to win all three. So so it passes on to next year, I think. Well, now that we've established how the tournament works and how the Pro-Am format works, let's understand a little bit more about polo. Now, Ellie, as far as polo goes, it's very glamorous, it's very cool. It's very aspirational. I, for one, love horses. I've dabbled a bit in horse race, not racing, but riding. But polo somehow frightens me. Has it ever frightened you? Absolutely, yeah. In fact, I, it took me a while to get used to the speed of the horses but I think like anything you, you you learn slowly and you go only at your own pace you yeah, yeah. So how do you make sure that you're safe and you enjoy the sport you know without that fear at the back of your head I think for me personally it was learn to ride properly first learn to ride a horse have good teachers around you and you have to push yourself of course but within your boundaries speaking of good teachers I understand that you've had a chance to catch up with Paja yes I have I managed to catch him yesterday uh, to, to explain a few of the little rules that not only confused me, but uh, for the people out there that, you know, because Pogba can sometimes be confusing. Oh, very good. Let's have a look at what Pogba had to say and how he kind of demystifies the game for us lesser mortals who are still to get there. Hi, Pogba. As you know, I'm an aspiring polo player myself, learning. Can you tell us a little bit about the rules? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, polo rules are basically like traffic rules. It's all about uh, right of way. And uh, the man with the ball, uh, usually on the line, the line of the ball, has a right of way. Anybody coming in has to respect that right of way. The basic rules are that uh, one team uh, tries to put the ball uh, between the post with the goal of, of the other team. And there's uh, four players on, the, on each side. The umpire is here, throws the ball in. This team here goes this way, and this team here goes this way. And then after a goal is scored, when they come to the middle, they, they switch sides. I'm often confused because when goals are scored, there's changing of ends. Why, why does this happen? Well, to keep it fair, as, as the game progresses, the field gets cut up and uh, the sun moves uh, across the sky, etc., etc. So just to keep, it, uh, keep the playing conditions level, every time a goal is scored, they switch sides. And any particular reason for the numbering? The number one is the main scorer. Uh, you, uh, the one, one and two are the forwards, the, the three is the pivot player, and the four is the fullback. The person that has possession of the ball must be allowed to progress with the ball. If you, if you get in front, if you block them with your horse or something like that, uh, illegally, you know, a foul occurs. The whole um, premise of the game is you've got to keep it as fast and as safe as possible. So all the rules in polo are designed uh, to that effect. And when you, you change ends with goals, if you happen to hit a goal in the opposition's end, what, what would that be considered? Well, that, that, uh, you get cursed by your players because that goal goes to the opposing team. As the horses are getting prepared to go onto the field to play the first polo match of the day, things here are really hotting up. It's getting very exciting. And the third, the match for the third place is between La Sarita and Kitchen Culture. Exciting. Very exciting. And I was lucky enough to catch up with Ali Reddy yesterday, the uh, captain of the Kitchen Culture team. And he was, feeling, he was feeling very confident. Really? Let's have a listen to what he had to say. Hi, Ali. Um, can you tell me, how, did you, how long have you been playing polo and how did you get into it? Ali, this is my fifth season. So four years so far and this is the fifth season. So I'm just starting to really enjoy it now, you come to a level, like with lots of sports, golf and others, you come to a level where you start to actually uh, become part of the game at a faster pace and uh, it's exhilarating. So fifth year, enjoying it. 
How did you get the team together? Friends, uh, similar ages, similar interests. Uh, so Stein Walkers is a good friend. Uh, Jerry Gunn is also a good friend. And, and myself, this is second or third year running. Okay. Uh, doing much better this year. Of course, it takes always takes longer for a team to gel and get the right pro with us. So uh, this year we made a more conscious effort to get the right pro, and I think we've got one. And uh, thankfully, uh, we're in there with a fight. You've got a good strategy. We have a good strategy. We have a strategy, and it'll, 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 it'll basically uh, play out today and see whether it's uh, better than the other teams. Ali Reda confident indeed. We're going to slip into a short break here. When we return, we'll find out whether or not Kitchen Culture made it to third place. Stay with us. Welcome back with Mandira and me to the Polo Series. Welcome back indeed and well done. We're getting set for all the action here. Kitchen Culture, La Sarita, all set to take each other on to determine who's going to come third. Let's go over to the action. And we're away. First out, Stein Wilkes, but he's beaten to it there by Sonny Khan. Sonny Khan, quick to that. Sonny sets off. Being chased down by Andres Laplacette. He's does enough to spoil it. There's Alvaro Ara chopping it around. These professionals, they fly all around the world, get onto strange horses, and are expected to play high gold polo immediately. But they are such fine horsemen as well. As the whistle goes. Alvaro Ara out of the saddle. That's the way to score 60 yarders. Take it over the top of the defenders and nobody can stop that. It's a fine penalty hit from the man from Argentina, Alvaro Ara. There's the pass. That's the sort of service you want if you're the skipper, Ali Raider. Ali has a really good chance. We just get that angle there. He's going the right way. That's a good shot. That's a good goal from Ali Raider. Very nicely done. Brings them right back into it. One goal to one and a half day trail from a super hit from Andres Laplacette. Three taps from Ali and a very nicely angled goal. It's met there by Sunny. No, Andres Lafacette on another grey. It's a nice looking, steely grey horse. And that's one for Sunny to chase. It's going to stay just short of the line, I think. Oh, Alvaro does a very spectacular pirouette. Igbal. Still have it, Sonny Khan, he leads it to Alvaro Ara. On the near side, now back on the offside. Andres Laplacette, the two Argentinians fighting for it now. There he goes, and he's going to get away from Stein as well. He's got Stein with him. Oh, it's a lovely pickup. What great ball control from Alvaro Ara. God, this deserves a goal. Let's hope so. It is a goal. Is it a goal? Yes, it is. It's waved. The flag is waved. What a fabulous piece of play. Absolutely inventing it as he went along, picking it out of nothing. Tremendous goal from Alvaro Ara. Coming down that line hard is Andres Laplacette now. Andres chops it round, he's gonna follow it up. But Alvaro's there, he's gonna get the tail shot. Gets it. Stein, picks it up well. He's got it, Stein has it. Sonny has it. It's moving well for Blacks, they've got men up there, they mustn't muddle each other. Going towards goal, and I think that's one for Andres Laplacette. Yeah. Goal has certainly been given. Now, apply some speed. He's going to come through himself by the looks of things. On the offside, now the near side, just dribbling it along the line. It's kicked forward by ponies, so it's a dangerous position for Black, but a whistle's gone. Dangerous place if you're the defending team to give one away, but let's see. <laughs> I'm sure that Alvaro is going to take this one. He doesn't need to do very much. Tap, and that's all it ever needed. It was a tap, so La Sarita extending their lead now back to three and a half to two. And easy peasy, and it's through for Andres La Placette. Now, this is going to make it interesting. Three and a half to three now. They trail still by the 
original handicap difference. Poncho Elephant, he starts the last chucker for this afternoon with just the half gold in it. And first off the mark was Alvaro Ara, backed by Sonny Khan, Ali Radar. Sonny Khan now, near side backhand, didn't get it. Charles Twist turns, I think on instruction from Alvaro Ara, he's gonna get the back shot in. Alvaro meets it, a little bit of fancy stick work in the air. Still going on. So feels for a whistle, but play the whistle like in every game. And there's Alvaro just stroking it through for a fine goal. Right out of the melee from the sideboards. Alvaro finally brings it through, brings it home for La Sarita. Four and a half goals to three. Gives them a little bit of breathing room in the first minute of this final chucker. And that's a goal, it's a goal. Well, we had a breath drawn in there and thought it may have gone right, but that's fine now. The chips are definitely in the pan. Four and a half goals to four now. Cut nicely, next right downfield, trying to pick up Stein, the two orange helmets, Stein and Charles Twist, fighting for it. Andres Laplacette first, oh, swings, misses. Jerry Gann has it. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Sonny had it. Who's got it now? Alvaro, oh, he's got to go for a very difficult next shot. My word, he got that right across goal. If that's a goal, that's a fabulous, fabulous next shot from the man from Argentina. You can see the helicopter movement of his stick. He knows that was a good shot. He's happy with that. I would be too. And what a good job for the team that is to put them one and a half goals ahead now. And the last hurrah for teams. Jerry loves it. It goes out of play over the back line. And the way that's ticking down. The clock's ticked all the way down. We have a winner. We have a third place for La Sarita, who just kept their nerve, kept it ticking over. They never lost the advantage of that half goal handicap advantage. And they run out very deserving winners at five and a half goals to four. It's a tough game. These guys were very good, uh, very disciplined, a pleasure to play with. So I think uh, I'm feeling very pleased with this win. I'm very grateful to my team. Uh, Alvaro Ara played an outstanding game. Sunny Khan, Giles Twist, Greg Parkhurst, super guys. Now that the team for the third place is decided, it's time for Paisano and Hent Hunters to take each other on for the final game. But before we go to the action and see the game itself, we had a chance to catch up with Johnny Lim of the Paisano team and find out about his chances. Hi Ronnie, um, tell me, your last tournament, you came second, your team, so this, this team, how do you feel about this seat today? Uh, well, we feel confident, uh, we've done some, uh, we made some improvements uh, according uh, to the team and the team mix, uh, hopefully we'll win this, uh, this tournament, yes. So a different lineup for Pesano, did you make a, a different lineup for a reason, different strategy? Uh, yeah, well, I mean it's to balance out the team in terms of uh, the strategy of play and the skill set. Um, so it looks like we got quite a balanced team this time around and uh, we enjoyed the last play uh, two days ago and as long as you enjoy it, uh, it will come naturally in terms of the win. Behind me you can see the headhunters and the Paisano teams lining up here for the final match. We're going to slip into a quick break. We'll return with the game. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Polo Series with Ellie and I and this gorgeous polo pony. Now, Ellie, as far as the game is concerned, I understand about 80% depends on how good your polo pony is, right? Absolutely. I mean, you, the polo pony, depending on the, the level of the tournament, absolutely is a big importance in the game. And you know that sometimes a player can change his polo pony up to four times in a game, which means one for each chucker. That's, of course, if they have that string of horses. And the temperament clearly understands that and, you know, it supports the game. So without any further ado, let's go across and have a look at how the final pans out. Thank <laughs> you. 
Four chuckers of, we hope, exciting open play. And first of that is Ang Kai for Paisano Polo. Kai taps it along. Back there, straight for Nico Pieroni. Nico wearing the three shirts. He's been challenged by Keith Yo. Backed well by Nico, who's first to turn there for the Whites. Ronnie Lim, the captain, he's got to make sure he keeps his line. Takes it on the near side with a forehand. Over the boards, 11 inches high, those boards, just to keep the ball in play, make it more fluent and fluid for the rest of us. And there's Runkai, setting off on a charge towards goal. He clips one, but he's clipped it a bit wide. Can he keep it in? He's going for it, and it's over the back line. Nico now takes this 60-yard penalty hit. The defenders can pack the goal with their men. He's going to try and loft it, and he scuffs it. And it's going to be met by a headhunter's player. So they get away with that one. It's a very common penalty, the 60-yard hit. You do need to convert those. Satar Khan going like the clappers through the field. He's clear. He's got support there from Clifton Yo as well. But Satar could do this all on his own. It's a lovely looking day. It's a great picture. And that looks like a good goal to Satar Khan to open the account. Nico Pieroni quick to that one. He needs to back it. He's going the other way, remember. He's going to leave it. He tells Ronnie Dim, his captain, get upfield. Oh, that's a lovely cut shot round towards goal. That's a great opportunity for young Runkai. Runkai taps it forward. That's got to be a goal. And Runkai scores. Still on to our beer. And we're very grateful to them, as ever, for their continuing support of Polo in Singapore. Sata Khan now has another crack of goal on his own. That's a lovely looking shot. It might roll the whole way. That's a terrific looking shot. Oh, that's a lovely goal from that angle from Sata Khan. This is a reasonably simple shot for Nico Pironi. He just walks up to it and is it being met? Oh, it's very well met there by Sata Khan. Blocks it, comes out from the other side of the goalpost, charges across. With anticipation. Sata picks it up from Joby Bay. Joby's calling for it. He wants it upfield. He's setting off like the clappers there. They both go the two pros. Joby Bay. Oh, and Nico's almost in his saddle. He's trying so hard to push him off. Nice work. Sata following it up. Still in play there. And also goes. Winds one up. And Barnes flags up in the air. Two goals all now. Scorer. Nico Pepperoni Pieroni. Sata Khan. Sata, he's got Clifton Yo upfield as well. But that was a call from Jovi. He gets a little bit too much angle on it, so Rukai gets back. Bell goes, we've got 30 seconds still. Keith Yo told to leave it as Sata Khan drives and cuts it upfield nicely. Jovi, he's now put spurs to his pony. He's just got a bit of more speed and he's got the angle, I think. That looks good to me. And with a very spectacular wave of the stick, it's through the goal. And that will end the chucker. Headhunters go at the halfway stage. Three goals to two. Jovi Bay picks it up. Challenge coming there from Christian Escudero. Christian doing a great job in just trying to mark the players, particularly the two pros, off it as much as possible. Clifton Yo knocks it through for Headhunters. It's moving the right way, and that's a very fine opportunity. And Jovi Bay, I think, then on the grey, knocks it back through, extends their lead. Headhunters four, Paisano Polo two. The stick work from. Well played. That's nice play from White, so this little period of play. Runkai combining very well with Nico Fioroni. Oh, it's lovely stuff. Come on, you deserve this. Taps it forward, not nothing, nothing too clever. It's rolling the right way. Is there any support there? We've got a goalpost down. No, don't worry about that. A goalpost is incredibly lightweight. They're designed to fall down if there's contact. They only weigh a couple of pounds. Uh, Sata Khan sets off going the other way up the field. This is wide open stuff as the clouds begin to lower over us. Christian goes to the near side backhand, does enough temporarily, but Joby's there, he's going to pick it up, this is a great scoring opportunity. Nico's there, but he can't do much about it, he's going to leave it to Satar Khan, Satar's just going to tap it through, and a nice goal for Headhunters again, five goals to two. Nico's going to take it across his own goal now, wants to make sure of a good hit, so he doesn't leave it there. Ronnie trying to give Clifton Yo some harassment, he does that successfully. Nico now. 
the Argentinian. He's moving at speed, look at that, the horse's head right down as he goes into a full gallop, 30, 35 miles an hour they're going now. He just checks, he needs to get the angle right here. That's a lovely looking shot and I, oh dear, what a shame, what a shame. Nico sets off with Jovi in pursuit, he's clear. Oh, left the swing too late, he overrides at that one. And Satar Khan, like a vulture, he's on it. That should be a goal. He's just going to tap it through. It's just going its own momentum. It's another goal now for Headhunters. Six goals to two they lead. Uh, that's a nice one from Clifton Yo. Just next it. Christian gets a bit of it. And that's the result. That's the final score. Six goals to two. Headhunters run out the winners of this year's International Pro-Am. A good display of combination work from Satar Khan and Joby Bay. Ably assisted by Clifton and Keith Yeo. Our commiserations go to Paisano Polo. Whatever strategy you decided worked well. Can you take us through that? Yeah, well, uh, man, line, line of the ball and ball. So marking tied and, and that was it. Actually, in the last Open, we played with uh, against uh, Paisano as well and, and we lost narrowly to them. But this time, uh, we managed to beat them. So today you've taken your revenge? <laughs> yes, yes. Kind of, kind of. But Ronnie, who's the patron of the other team, uh, he's also my very close friend. We're all very good friends. We fight like hell on the field, but you know, off the field, we're great friends. Well, the matches are over. It's time now for the presentation. The teams, of course, the winning teams get felicitated, but that's not all, is it? No, we have uh, best turned out pony and best playing pony as well. Which explains the company we have in this frame. So let's head over to the presentation and see which pony wins. Well, the day is winding down and so must the two ladies in red. Have you had a good time? I've had a great time. What a great tournament. It's been great having you here as a guest presenter. We don't have time to keep babbling, though we'd love to. But thank you very much for joining us. And we'll see you soon. And until then, may the horse be with you. Goodbye. <laughs>